So I just watched this entire 40 minute video with Jeremy Crawford talking about 1D&D and I watched all of it and took notes so you don't have to. And this video is basically just me summarizing some of the stuff he said and enlightening you about what this video reveals about the future of 1D&D. So basically Jeremy Crawford addresses some of the feedback they've gotten on the first UA and also some of the feedback they've seen on the second UA. And he also talks about what's coming up in the next few UAs. And then he also reveals quite a lot about their process going forward. First off, I have to say that though I'm not always the biggest Crawford fan. I think he comes off really well in this video. He seems genuinely passionate and excited about the future of D&D and that to me is reassuring because if you've seen my last video you know that I'm a bit concerned about 1D&D and the team behind it and stuff and I think this sort of gave me a more positive look on Jeremy Crawford. Crawford starts by telling us that more than 39,000 people filled out the survey for the first UA and that feedback was mostly positive. Nothing scored below 50% favorability which is kind of Wizards of the Coast internal dump score it seems. Actually only three things scored below 70% and these were the Artling, the Dragonborn and then the D20 test rule for critical hits, inspiration and so on. That's not too surprising. These were also the issues that I mainly had with the first UA because the Artling just sort of seemed like an Asimar ripoff with animal faces. The Dragonborn was being nerfed again so its breath attack was once again useless and the crit rules where monsters couldn't crit and spellcasters couldn't crit on spell attacks just didn't seem very fun and then there was the getting inspiration or roll of the 20 and stuff like that. Crawford also confirmed that the Artling isn't replacing the Asimar. The Asimar will still be in the game either just in the source books it's already in maybe it'll be reprinted it it's not quite certain. As for things that scored high in the survey, having feats as part of the background was a clear winner, he says, and that's no real surprise. It's a house rule that I've had for years, and I think many tables like it that way, giving characters a feat when they start the game. So first level feats seems like they are definitely there to stay. As for other things that scored high, the human, dwarf, orc, elf, and tiefling races all scored 80% or more, and then the rest of the player races sort of trailed behind at 70% favorability. As for how they're interpreting this feedback, Crawford reveals that we're going to get a refreshed take on the Artling and Dragonborn in the next UA, and that we're specifically going to get some flavor changes to the Artling, it sounds like, to maybe make it less celestial and more animalistic, and then the Dragonborn's breath attack is probably going to be, well, improved a bit, and then we also get a new fifth level ability, and that sounds quite interesting. The next playtest is also going to feature another race, and then a take on the Cleric, and something he calls the Bastion system, which is about letting the players build a home base. And then maybe not much more than that, as he says, it'll be a smaller UE. Crawford also confirms that after that playtest, we will get the Paladin and a Druid, which would be the rest of the Priest group. And then he says Warrior and Mage are coming up after that, though it is unclear if it means it'll be in that order, but it could sound like we're getting Warrior after the Priests. As for the bigger picture, Crawford also restates they will get 48 subclasses as part of the playtesting process for one d four for each of the 12 classes and that we're also getting new encounter rules and better monster customization both of which will be really welcome for most games i think he also calls the next player's handbook the 2024 player's handbook which is no surprise but he also says when the book releases in a couple of years or the new rules release in a couple of years which could sound like we're talking late 2024 and that's a perfect segue to our sponsor us, because Heritage Guide to Devotion and Divinity, a 5e source book that is live on Kickstarter right now and actually only has 24 hours left, is going to give you everything you need to make the Divine Age special part of your 5e game. And if you're concerned about 1D&D being right around the corner, a couple of years, there's a lot of time to use that book. Plus, we're also doing everything we can to make sure that Heritage Guide to Devotion and Divinity is going to run perfectly, both with 5e and also with 1D&D. So if you haven't pledged for Heritage Guide to Devotion and Divinity yet, I strongly urge you to go down in the description and click the link down there and check it out on Kickstarter. It's going to be an awesome book and we would really love to have your support. Back to Crawford, he also addresses the expert UA a bit and actually explains some of their design choices. Nerfs to Great Ribbon Master and Sharpshooter were made to make them less must-have feats, which kind of makes sense. And he seems to be implying that warrior characters will get class features that would define them and make them more powerful. And here he mentions the new weapon options or features that the warrior UA will include. And Crawford seems to believe that they will make up for losing these probably too powerful feats. I think that's a good design philosophy that we're not going to have feats that are must-have, but I just hope that it ends up being enough because the martial caster divide hasn't really been a 
address. It's not something that he addresses in this video either, not directly at least. And we have already seen the Rogue and the Ranger, which I would call more martial characters than casters, and they didn't get any weapon options. So if they're going to leave those as they are and not do anything to sort of bring mages down, then I still feel like we have a quite wide martial caster divide. But hey, everything's up in there. Let's see what they do with these weapon options and if the Ranger and Broke and other semi martial characters are going to get some more love. Another thing I also found interesting is that he makes it clear that taking away Ranger features like Natural Explorer and Favorite Enemy had to do with doing away with features that require DM buy-in. That's absolutely the right thing to do. So while I bemoan the loss of flavor that we had with the Ranger, the new Ranger, I appreciate that they're doing this to fix some of the oddball features like the Ranger's feature and the Wild Magic Sorcerer's features and so on because it makes for a better game. So overall, I felt more positive about 1DND after watching this interview with Jeremy Crawford and I like the way that he seems to be taking in feedback, even written feedback, and encouraging people to leave written feedback and fill out the survey. So the best thing you can do if you are dissatisfied with something in the UA is go in and take those surveys. I can't tell you this enough. If you care about the future of the game, if you want want D&D to be a great game, please fill out the surveys. So yeah, a bit more positive now. We'll see if that changes when the next UA drops, which is probably not too far from now. Maybe they have messed up the cleric completely and I'll be back to whining about that. But for now, let's try and stay positive. Do you agree or disagree with something I've said in this video, did you watch the interview and have some thoughts on your own? Please leave them in the comments down below. And then I have to remind you to go check out Heritage Guide to Devotion and Divinity if you want some of that divine goodness in your 5e game. The campaign closes in less than 24 hours, so if you haven't pledged yet, this is really the last chance to do so and help us reach those last stretch goals and put even more awesome content in the book. Beyond that, there's not a whole lot left to say, except thank you so much for watching and I hope that I'll see you in the next video.